Well, we've made it to downtown Nashville and there is a Johnny Cash Museum and Cafe that also above it has a Patsy Cline Museum. So we're gonna go in and, I don't know, maybe get one, maybe two vlogs out of this. We shall see. I think both would be incredible. Yeah, they're literally in the same building. You can see here the Johnny Cash Museum sign, but you can also see tucked between it, the Sun Diner, which is, you know, obviously based off of Johnny making his first success at Sun Record, Sun Studio. Check it out. It is a real hopping street here, let me tell you. Well, let's check it out. All right, once again, another one of these museums that has the ridiculous no filming policy. So it's all photos, but here we're starting out with some furniture from Johnny and June's house. And I'm just going to preface this by saying awesome shirt right here, but the museum was really crowded. So I had to do some jumping around because they're just, you, there was a line and you really felt uncomfortable if you looked at anything too long. Now this is the start of it. This is Johnny Cash and the two guys that he started playing out with, which I have a great story that we'll get into a little bit later, but it was originally called Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two. Then later on they became the Tennessee Three. There they are performing live. And um, I had to skip over to starting with uh, replicas of Johnny's first guitar. Um, this was an exact replica. This would have been exactly what his parents got him as a little kid. His Sears Roebuck uh, Silvertone radio. This is also what the family would have had to listen to gospel music. This was a replica also. But they, most everything else is his own. Including this is his actual birth certificate. His copy of it. Check that out. Yeah, he was born in Arkansas. And raised in Arkansas. And here you can see went by John R. Cash. John, or sometimes J.R. These were his marbles from when he was a little kid. Didn't have much, not in Dias, so. These were the hymnals from his family household. And there's the family in front of the house. Little Johnny down there. Look at him. He looks exactly the same. He grew up looking exactly the same. Now check out his uh, high school yearbook, or his class photo. There he is down there. They had a weird glare on the glass. It took forever to get some of these photos to work, so heads up if you're going to be going there. Now, this describes that Johnny went to visit his brother in Memphis, who was a mechanic, and that guy, his brother, had a couple of mechanic friends, and they became Johnny's band. They were amateur musicians, and this is the original Tennessee 2 amplifier. And what's cool is that you'll notice that's a handwritten note down there. A lot of the stuff that was from people had been in Johnny's old museum, and he got people like Luther Perkins to write down that this was verifying what it was. So here you see Marshall Grant was the uh, bass player in the group and him saying that that was his. That's Johnny's guitar. Check that out. That's what they would have uh, recorded those early songs with Sun Records on. Stand up bass, that would have been Marshall's stand up bass. And then these are just timelines. If you want to freeze on this or push pause, you can read the timeline of Johnny's start. Um, like I said, there was a ton in this museum, one of the most I've ever seen, so I couldn't stand too many places for very long or people were giving you the evil eye. There was a young Johnny Cash, but that was in junior high school, and here's a copy, uh, well, here is the senior class postcard that he sent his parents. Didn't have a lot to say, having a good time, John. And there he is to the left, to his brothers. And then this was showing that he used to pick cotton as a kid, and that was uh, what he would haul the cotton in, and there's a, uh, a photo of people out working in the fields using those. Now, he went into the Air Force, so they had a lot to do with his Air Force in here. They had his, um, his jacket there, his name tag, and then those are his dog tags and a lot of uh, drawings that he made while he was in the military, diagrams and various um, papers that he had filled out. And this is what he, this was the type of unit he would have used. He was a Morse code operator. So that was the same era that he would have been using that in his duties. Check that out. Yeah, it's kind of weird part of his history you don't think about. But there's his air training command certificate. There you can see FFC John R. Cash. And this was his German fishing license and his 
customs declarations. So, and then also some uh, notes that he wrote back home. His there, see there, you can see him actually telling what it is, signing it himself. That was his New Testament. And then these are his uh, discharge papers from the military and the papers they gave him showing him how to acclimate back to civilian life, which I thought was kind of interesting. A little bit closer in on his discharge papers. And then here you can see he, um, this is basically a description of how the group formed, him going to Memphis and meeting them through his brother. And then there's his first marriage certificate to Vivian, um, his first wife, and that's Johnny and Vivian. And those are signed copies of some of Johnny's son records. He was the, oh, and check this out, his first apartment rental with Vivian, their rental receipt. Um, Johnny was the biggest star at Sun there for a while, or at least as far as making money. So there's a pay stub from Sun Records for $15,100, and this was kind of cool. This was one of the early um, gifts that Gibson gave him, a Johnny Cash guitar. I just thought this was beautiful. I'd never seen a pick guard quite like that, and then I love the neck on this, how they put his name in there. Um, and then this was um, a jumpsuit that they made him for the rehearsals of San Quentin. There you can see that's exactly what, what it says, 1969. And I tried to get a little close on there just because it's so monumental because he became great friends with Merle Haggard and Merle was an inmate for robbing a, a, a bar during this time. And then they became great friends. And that was one of the cell doors from his performances. And me in front of the cell door, I had to. You know, it's just too monumental. And then this was a, a shirt that he gave away in like a fan club drawing. And there's him wearing it. It was kind of a motivator to, for the fan club. And, um, and he ended up taking a picture with the woman who won it. Said. And then check out those boots. <clears throat> I thought they were just amazing looking. I love the detail on stuff like that. And they match the shirt, of course. So Here's Johnny and Vivian and the kids. Now here it talks about how he was um, performing 300 days a year and he decided to put together a, uh, a group of performers thinking that would be a good way to promote himself but he ended up losing a lot of money on it. And then he, this is when he talks about um, how he moved Vivian and the kids out to Ventura because he wanted to get into the movie making business and um, he was only in a few things, it just wasn't quite what he wanted, it wasn't the career he thought he was going to get. Now these are, um, these are lyrics that he worked on with Miss Carter. So you can see up there Maybell Carter on a recording he made and this was what she played on. She they were, you know, they were known for using those. And um of course he would eventually end up with June. So these are early show posters from the San Quentin. And then these are uh badges that were used by the staff for the Folsom Prison recording. And then <laughs> an escape card, which I just thought was kind of interesting that they would have had those mentioning that you know someone had been as, had escaped and then there you can see the reel to reel tape from the rehearsals at El Rancho and Modesto for the recording of San Quentin or was that Folsom um and then here's some demo tapes that he made the night before the Folsom Prism concert which is great now there are some handwritten lyrics for Folsom Prism Blues which was a huge hit i mean you can hear the guys going nuts in the recording which is awesome I love his, look at that, I love his handwriting too, it's great. Now this was a Million Dollar Quartet. Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Johnny, Elvis, and um, and they had a great exhibit to Sun Records in there, but they also had right here the wedding photo of Johnny and June, and then the statement that they would send out to the uh, fan club members, just letting them know what's going on around the house now that they're together, and um, just, it was kind of cool, they were just letting them know about their family life. And then here's a letter to his sister Reba, um, a humorous letter because she would handle his business accounts and he was saying, here, don't you ever get any mail? And then he responds on the bottom also that he says, once you've seen one post office, you've seen them all. Just hilarious. And then this was another guitar that was gifted to him with his name at the top. Beautiful guitar. Look at that. Kind of surprised they didn't do anything in the neck as far as his name. And then here's Johnny performing, and you can see that shirt and jacket right here in front. He really donated a lot of stuff. Now this is a, um, as you can see, a cigarette case that he used to use. And then this was a an award for he and June by the Country Music Association. 
And then, of course, a road case from the Johnny Cash show, which was filmed at the Ryman. And Johnny would give these out as gifts. They were belt buckles that said, I'm a friend of Johnny Cash, or Johnny Cash is a friend of mine. This is him meeting the president, and this was when he was um, given an award. So he's actually performing at the White House, and that's what he performed at in front of President Nixon and Pat Nixon. And there's the medal that he was awarded, Medal of the Arts. And then this was a great suit they had on a rotating display. Um, the stars you see are lights, but um, as it rotated, you could kind of get an idea of how cool that would have looked on Johnny, especially as it spins, you'll see on the legs. I, I especially like that. Yeah. <laughs> you can totally see him wearing that. So patriotic. And this was celebrating the bicentennial. There, you can see 1776, 1976. Very patriotic guy. And then these are all 7-inch singles of things that Johnny recorded, as well as all of his um, releases in album form. And then Johnny became a pitch man. Pitch and Acme Boots. Yeah, and harmonicas. I love that. What a great photo of him. Looks like such a cool dude. And then this was cool because they had a lot of outtake photos from that album cover that Johnny and June did together. They just look, I mean, they just look so in love, don't they? They look so happy. Check that. Carrying on with Johnny Cash and June Carter. And then this was the Sun Records little tribute. They had this Elvis jacket right there that you saw him pictured in. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, what a great jacket. And then there it is again so you can get a better look at it. That would have been like 1955, 56. And then that poster up there we'll talk about that that was the earliest th and this is just showing all the sun record stuff they have but that was the earliest poster of elvis that's known and right here that's where it talks about his mississippi appearance january 12th you can see scotty and bill gotta love it scotty moore there's johnny and elvis real young real young check that out now here is the contract from Heartbreak Hotel that they got from May Axton, and, and it says that she ran into Elvis at the uh, country music convention, talked him into it, and pitched the, the song to him, and he agreed to record it on his first RCA recording, which he did, and Chet, Chet Atkins and Floyd Kramer played on it. So there's the full contract. Heartbreak Hotel became a huge hit, of course. And here's the first uh, poster f promoting that uh, the single was out. Now this is crazy, they have the acetate that probably would have been played by Dewey Phillips and they're saying that this is one of three that was the only one that remains that was actually taken from the master tapes. So this would have been played on the air before they ever recorded the second song and ever sent it out to radio stations. Now this is cool, this is Elvis' high school yearbook from his senior year. Look at him, good hair dude. Awesome. <laughs> and then of course the, uh, the three guys, Scotty and Bill Elvis. And then this was the Jerry Lee Lewis section. This is kind of cool because take a look at his white leather jacket that we're going to see here. It kind of reminds me of something Axl Rose would wear. And this is going way back into the 50s. So that black cowboy shirt and the, uh, the white leather jacket, awesome. And this was all Roy Orbison. People forget Roy started out at Sun Records too. Wasn't as successful there until he left, but those were his boots. And they had quite a few things of Roy's, which I thought were great. You can just almost see Roy performing in those golden white Look at those. I'd wear those. Those are crazy. Almost look like spats. And then this was the master tape for Roy's first single with Sun Records, Ooby Dooby and I Forgot to Remember, as well as a backstage pass. And then some of Roy's signature glasses. And then they actually said right here that um, just like Johnny Cash's black attire and Liberace's candelabra, Roy Orbison's glasses became his synonymous look. You know, that's what people came to know him as. And then this was cool because they had one of his 70s guitars, one of his tellies, his Fender Telecaster right there. And then you had a copy of his Ubi Dooby release and a Roy Orbison performing. And then this was just an overview of kind of talking about the Million Dollar Quartet night. And then this was the whole exhibit. It, it seems like there's more when you're in there, but it wasn't quite as big as you'd think. And this was all Johnny stuff. They had some really great stuff. Um, the guitar that he recorded on at Sun Records, uh, they had, and check that out, it's an old Hoffner. Then they also had um, one of the microphones that he would have recorded on, 
probably recording his guitar, who knows, didn't really say. And then there's Johnny receiving the award that we're going to see next. So that's what was he, he was just pictured with, that gold record. And then this is describing how I Walk the Line was, um, was such a big deal in his career, and it's kind of like his signature song. And there's an old Johnny Cash trio when they added the extra guy. Now this was all from the movie. These were what Reese Witherspoon and Joaquin Phoenix would have worn or used in the movie I Walk the Line. So there was the guitar and amplifier that you see, and then they had a couple more. There you can see Johnny's shirt, well, Joaquin Phoenix's shirt and Reese Witherspoon's. It's kind of a nice thing, but then when you turn around, it got cooler because they had stuff from his studio. And he had a home studio in the cabin, which is great, but right here they start with the Rick Rubin stuff. They show the console that he recorded his last Rick Rubin record, American recordings, which are all great. But then it got even cooler because you, you're looking at this one, you think of all the great music that's recorded on there, and then you see this old digital recorder here, and where you read it says, a number of Cash's raw vocal tracks remain on the hard drive. So it's kind of cool because <clears throat> this was back in a day where the recording was right into that console. And then this was the um, childhood piano. So you'll eventually see a picture of him and his sister sitting in front of it. But this tells the whole story of um, how long it had been in the family. I think it came from Johnny's... Uh, great-grandfather, yeah, his great-grandparents there, 1852 to 1912, so that gives you an idea of how old it really is, and um, it was originally in the other Johnny Cash Museum, and now it lives here, and there's a picture of him and his sister Reba with the guitar on top, and that's the only thing it's missing now is that guitar on top. Then here it's promoting the uh, live Johnny Cash show, the touring version, and um, this is about how Bob Dylan recorded Nashville Skyline at Johnny's house. Johnny wrote the liner notes and then won a Grammy for writing the liner notes. <laughs> That's a great record, too. Nashville Skyline, Lay Lady Lay on My Big Brass Bed. There's some great songs on there. Kind of his country album. There's, of course, The Man in Black wearing white. And then this shows all the movies and things that he was in, and they actually had some of the props. That's his hat from... I believe it was Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. Yeah, there we go. Um, and also the legend of Frank and Jesse James. And then it also says that he uh, he wore this in Trail of the Tears, this top hat, kind of an Abe Lincoln looking top hat here. And then photos from a gunfight with Kirk Douglas. And then it says that this was worn it was, was his cowboy hat from Stagecoach. And then this is from the Johnny Cash Show. These are um, the Carter family costumes. This was his jacket. And, um, and then you'll also see down here, it's the drum kit that was pretty much used through his ABC TV special and a lot of his live shows. This was his uh, main drummer's kit. And then, of course, the Carter family costumes. And then these were all books that Johnny wrote in his lifetime. They had some great stuff here like this that I didn't know he was an artist, but this was his recreation of the Shroud of Turin that he made. Isn't that something? He did a great job. And then there's his Holy Bible, his King James Bible. And this was from the House of Cash. Now, um, this was kind of fascinating because they had a lot of the place settings and a lot of the furniture from inside the uh, family home. And so that was all China that he and June would have used. This was their wedding announcement that you can see. And then that setup was really great because that was all directly from their house. And wait till you see um, that's the house. He, he saw that and fell in love with it. A guy was building it and he talked him into selling it. And this was a nice touch. They had something that he had written to June. It says, June, my love, my life for life, Johnny Cash, 1998. And then that I just thought was interesting because everybody from Shelley Winters to Elvis Presley, they all had those in their house. And just unique little accents to this like that. I thought those kind of things were great. If you didn't pay attention, you wouldn't notice them. And that would have been John's chair. And then this is a, a picture of the overview of the house. He loved this house. And like I said, he uh, this was when he, was, he had left Vivian and it was before June. He saw this house as it was being built and asked the guy who was building it for his own family to sell it to him, and so he did. 
and Johnny pretty much stayed there till the end. You can see it was 14,000 feet, and um, the house was filled with stone, and after uh, Johnny passed away, Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees bought it, and they eventually had a, um, a fire, and Barry Gibb allowed them to take the stone wall that uh, Johnny loved so much. You can see right here, um, he allowed them to take the stone wall and recreate it in each exact place the way it was. And then there are some of uh, Johnny and June's clothing and some of Johnny's personal stuff. You can see his credit card in there, his harmonica, his boots. And then an award for the Highwaymen. Favorite video group. And that's a guitar signed by all the Highwaymen, which I'm jealous of. And then this is great. Uh, you see a bunch of caricatures of them, and then someone got a lithograph and had them all write their very first lyrics from the Highwaymen album on there. So that's really cool. Check that out. And then these were all um, various things from Johnny's collection, his awards. And then this was great. They had a picture of him and Paul McCartney, and then they had the actual shirt that he's wearing in that photo right there. thought that was kind of neat. Paul McCartney was a huge fan of Johnny Cash. Look at that. Young Paul McCartney. And then this I showed because they had everything in this photo pretty much there. There's the duster jacket. There's the shirt. And then you can see over to the side, there's the guitar that is, photo is pictured in the photo. Nice guitar, too. It's an old Guild guitar. Then I flash back to the photo. You can see everything right there. This is Johnny hugging his award, a recording artist award, and then they had the award right there. It's a governor's award. And then they had a couple of posters, which were neat. And then it led into, check that out, he used to give guitars as gifts that said, Johnny Cash, so-and-so is a friend of mine, and sign it Johnny Cash. Wouldn't you love to have one of those? This is um, some Buckeye beads that he made his sister, and he sings about him in the song Flesh and Blood about making Buckeye beads. So those were for Reba. Pretty handy guy. Um, here's his personal planner, and throughout the museum they had different things that he had created by hand. Look at how detailed he was. I mean, just everything down to the day. Then a couple of uh, tour jackets. And then here's his stage suit from the TV movie The Baron. And he and, and then that's the suit. And then June's uh, dress. You can see she wore this in numerous things. And then Johnny was an artist. That's his art. And um, they also had examples where people had written in and said, Hey, my husband's a huge fan. Can you draw him something? And he would draw it back on the back of the paper. And then these are um, his words for receiving a Grammy. And then this is sad. These are the uh, the words that he spoke at June's funeral. If you want to pause it and read it, it's pretty heartbreaking. Um, you can tell the guy just loved her with every bit of his soul, and it was it was pretty hard to read that. Now here's Johnny Cash's guitar. Um, they made a signature Johnny Cash guitar. It was pretty much just a black guitar with his name on the headstock, but I liked all the the um, stars there and the inlay. And then these were some of their clothing. And this one in particular I thought was interesting. I didn't know that he uh, was a fan of Jamaica, and this is what he would wear in his frequent trips to Jamaica, that white shirt. And then that was a belt that he made. That, Like I said, he was making a lot of stuff. He made that belt. Now, this is really sad. When you get to right to the end of the tour, they have things from the Hurt video, and that was the sign from when Johnny Cash covered Trent Reznor's Hurt. Right there, that's a clip right from the the music video and right above this where they were playing the music video and so everybody was stopping and this was the chair and the bus that are in the music video that he's sitting in um, right there he's pouring getting ready to pour out that glass of wine so sad I mean it is just a heartbreaking video but then they had a description telling about how um, they had asked Trent Reznor if Johnny Cash could cover that song, and Trent was kind of apprehensive because he thought it was a gimmick. And then he said when he saw the video, he, he felt like somebody had stolen his girlfriend because he knew the song was no longer his ever again, that it was Johnny's song. And this was the bust from the music video that you see flash throughout. They also show the old museum in there. And every once in a while from here they pan over and you see June like almost welling up in tears in the video. So that's a close-up of the chair that he's sitting in. 
And then this was great because they showed the cover, and he always wore that ring, and they had the ring on display. So I'll cut back to showing you the music video, and he's wearing the ring in the video as well. You can see right there. It's a sad video, and everybody was almost in tears. There I am, you know, taking a photo in front of it. But everybody that stopped there was pretty much welling up in tears. And I just had to get one last shot of it all. Well, that's it for the Johnny Cash Museum. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Come back and see me tomorrow. You can pretty much guess what we're going to be doing tomorrow since it costs $27 to park for two hours. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. That was a fantastic museum. Tons and tons of stuff. And I loved especially that Johnny Cash himself documented a lot of that stuff and literally wrote on there saying that I use this for this. So highly recommend you check it out if you're in town. Have a great night, everyone. We will see you all tomorrow for, you can probably guess, some Patsy Cline. See you all then. Goodbye.